last time on LMM. We took a trip to Sky where we unanimously decided that the best car was the mighty Persia 106, the car which dragged the stricken Beamer to safety after a slight mishap with its cooling system, the car which became the mobile charging system for the MR2. Oh God, will it fit? That's the problem. Oh god, that's going to be tight, isn't it? And of course, the car that became Morgan's main mode of transportation to be able to see the glorious Isle of Skye. The car which, when given the challenge of driving to one of the first reaches of Skye at Coral Beach, decided that it was indeed its time too to join the other cars that we'd taken and break down resulting in a, a late night evening with the boys sat in the car, waiting for recovery until finally a rather unimpressed mechanic turned up to see if he could work any magic to restore the stricken car to life. After all too little sleep, a new day broke across the gorgeous and magical Isle of Skye, and me and Morgan were up early to return him to the stricken BMW, which raised the question, did the mighty 106 still live? Well, of course it did. And this was a good thing. For in order for Morgan's BMW to be recovered, he had to be with it, and Matt, in his foresight, had taken the passenger seat out of the MR2, meaning Morgan's only way back was in the 106. So we headed off, enjoying the magnificent roads of Sky, and roads that I've now driven more times in the dark than I had in the light. We pulled over for a stop and to top up the 106 tanks for the proposed eight and a half hours of round trip driving that I was about to have to do. And this gave Morgan one last chance to sample the absolutely spectacular scenery of Sky. With the tank brimmed, we headed off towards the mainland and started to really put some miles down. But after a few hours, we too felt that we needed to be refilled. And so we pulled over at possibly the only Mackie D's in the Highlands and gave Morgan his first ever taste of a McDonald's breakfast. And as you can see from his face, he absolutely loved it. Feeling full and satisfied, we headed off for the remaining two and a half hours back to where the BMW lay. And I found a new fun game. Would the Beamer still be there? And if so, would it be a burnt out husk? Or maybe it would be up on bricks? And, well, disappointingly, it was still there, in pretty much the same state as we'd left it. Bar the fact that it now had flat tyres. We're back. Tires inflated, Morgan got onto the phone to organise the car's recovery. Yeah. Goodbye, thanks. Hi, Carl. Sweet! They can't put me in the car, a van uh, with pan due to the pandemic. So, and there's 400, 400 odd miles back home. So they're going to get me a, a hire car with Enterprise. So we'll see what I get. So I don't care what I get, actually. As long as it's a hire car, that's all I care about. So here we are, back where uh, we were a couple of days ago. Um, me and Morgan have successfully made it back to the stricken Beamer. And now we're waiting for a recovery to turn up, which was meant to be here some time ago. Um, actually, I don't know. It was meant to be here at one, wasn't it? And we've been here, what, half an hour? I mean, they have organised stuff. He's got a car. I've got to take him on a car, and then I've got to make my way back to Matt, which, um, bringing up a map now, I'm here, and I've got to get all the way back over there. So that's going to be fun. Cavalry has arrived. But it's not for that car. It's for that one. We bid farewell to the friendly mechanic and his bright yellow van and headed off to take Morgan to pick up his hire car so that he could make his way home. 
leaving the now infamous car park for what we all hoped was the last time. So the plan of Morgan delivery and recovery of his car didn't go quite as planned. I'm now in Sterling at Enterprise Rent-A-Car, which is where I've dropped him off. Which is a lot further the wrong way than I wanted to be. So I've now got to get my poor wounded 106 all the way back across Scotland. Oh, it does not like that. The front suspension on this is unhappy. All the way across Scotland, back up to Skye. Now, the journey to pick up his car was four hours and 40 minutes. I've now had to drive a further 35 minutes in entirely the wrong direction to get to Stirling. So the plan is to kind of talk a little bit about the 106, how wonderful the 106 is because it is the hero car, and um, show you some of the sights on one of the best roads I've ever driven. For you see, Morgan's car died no further than here. In fact, on the road there, there is still the stain of antifreeze and coolant, which is a shame because it's from this moment onwards that the roads get fun. Yes, dear Morgan, the guy who loves driving as much, if not more than any of us, and he likes his track days and likes, you know, winding fun roads, broke down at the very start of, quite simply, the best driving road I have ever been on, or well, series of driving roads. So, um, I feel for the first while that Morgan was in the car with me traveling, he was rather upset because he knew just how much fun he would have had driving these roads. And the most stunning thing about these roads are that they just get better and better and better. And I'm on the A82 at the moment. But it's just fantastic because we hit this corner here and it's just mountains, river, it's, it's just incredible. So, one of the things that we kind of mentioned on, we have talked about a few times here on LMM, is the concept of cheap cars and the fact that you don't need an expensive 10,000, 20,000, 50,000, 100,000 pound, million pound car to go out and have fun. It's a, one of the big things that we try to stress, that you can drive and have fun in almost anything. And this has never been more true in the case of the 106. Matt's car has had issues, and he'll say yes, but it didn't properly break down. It's not like this, which had a fairly big failure. But it fails at its primary purpose as actually being a car. Because whilst it moved Matt around, it can't move Matt and Morgan around. The little 106, fantastic. And on these roads, do you know what? I actually think it was built for them. It just eats up these roads like, oh, it's fantastic. The point is you don't need to spend a huge amount of money to find something that you're going to really enjoy. The 106 is not the right car to bring to Scotland. I can see that. But now we're here on this road. Yes, I can think of better cars, but I am absolutely loving it. So the adventure continues as we push further up into the mountains and the roads just keep getting more and more spectacular like that, the valley laid out in front of us. It is incredible and what's most just stunning up here is the way that the weather changes. We go from having pouring rain to dry to overcast to sunny all in the matter of minutes. But over there in the valley, there's sunshine. Above me at the moment, it's overcast, but okay. Up ahead, it's definitely rain. It's just amazingly, well, majorly changeable. Which means you've really got to keep your eye and yeah, keep, keep thinking of what's happening because it's very easy for this to all suddenly change. The other thing that changes quite a lot is the quality of the road surface. We go from bits like I'm on now, which is basically brand new tarmac to bits which are, let's say, more aged and less wise, which is, yeah, it makes it very interesting driving because you really have to pay attention to your road 
and temper your driving accordingly. But the thing that just keeps on getting is this view. The closer we get to the mountains, the bigger the mountains become. And as you go around one mountain, another one will become apparent, which is bigger yet. It is just quite unreal. And amazingly, so far, the Lua 106 is just loving it. We're on a long downhill stretch now, and it's fantastic. We started off uh, out of a nice viewing platform looking over the railway, and that's the first of many viewing places along this road. It very much is a tourist route, and it's the biggest downside to the whole road is the fact that you will get stuck behind tourists and lorries. So I pulled over to let them go past just to be able to get a bit of clear road. The restriction along here is 60, and I am sat bang on 60 miles an hour. And for bits like this, it's, yeah, it's fine. And then we get to the twisty turny bits, and then it's really quite good fun. The view is just incredible, and we've come at such a good time. The heather's out, the whatever they are, are out. Everything is very green. The forest lays out before me. It just feels amazing. It doesn't really feel like the UK at the moment, or at least not the UK that I'm used to. It's very different from home. It's very different. And um, even though we've really been to the far end, where the mountains climb up and into the mountains, into the, the bigger and more exciting of the roads, I've already got that excitement bubbling again on this a long, slow climb up into the mountains, away from like the river that's flowing alongside us. This is the time that I'm starting to kind of just keep a, a very close eye on the 106's temperature gauge as it has to work a little bit harder. Thankfully the wet and the cool temperature around us is helping to maintain a, a nice water temperature inside my engine and hopefully maintain a happy 106. So at the end of the day it's what we really want is a happy little 106 because so far she has done so very well. And you know what? I am exceptionally proud of the little car. It is not what it's built to do and it has just just roared through all of this, just going on. Yeah, apart from breaking down once, which was fixable. Yeah, that's that's a big thing to take from this. It's just I love this little car so much. I really do. Of course, if you are thinking of coming up to Sky and to do the road that leads from well, Stirling all the way up to Fort William and Fort William to Sky, bring a car that you know. And I'm not saying bring something that's necessarily fast, because I'm not encouraging speeding and being stupid on the roads. You don't need to on these roads. They're not roads to drive fast on. They are roads to really enjoy with something that you know how it works. Perfect example being the 106. Doesn't go fast. Not really, it doesn't even go fast downhill. But it handles nicely, it's a bit like a go-kart. Suspension is quite soft, it eats up all the bumps in the roads beautifully. But it will go where I tell it to. It's amazingly well planted and it's very enjoyable. So yeah, come up and do these roads and bring something you like. It's, I don't think you'll regret it, even now with the road being wet. It's amazing because earlier the rain was coming down, the clouds were here, I could see nothing and now half an hour later it's opened up, there's still a drizzle but the view is there and you can appreciate the view. It is just right here, it opens up in front of you and you get this sense, this ribbon cutting its way through the landscape and it's the only thing, there isn't anything else there this ribbon that goes through the landscape and drives through, that is the only thing. That's what's so totally mind-boggling about this, is there isn't anything else in front of me. The features in front are tarmac, bridge, tarmac going uphill, big lake, river. That's it. That, how would you describe where I am at the moment? Well, I'm in the middle of the valley, by the bridge on the road. And they'll probably know where you are because there's anything else here. There's just nothing here to, to, to go with. It's, it's so desolate. I mean, you can really get a sense of isolation out here. And this isn't even the, the best bit. You start, as we go from here, starting to really feel 
Oh yeah. I'm in the middle of nowhere. So, just one of the many, many beauty spots on this road, which are just too good to pull over and miss. They are just magnificent areas. The spectacular beauty. It is just amazingly superb. Here we go. Now, this video isn't just a trip up to Sky showing you some of the amazing roads. No, it's more than that. This is my ode to the 106. This is my love letter to it. In fact, this is my love letter to small cars. Things which often get overlooked and seen by lots of people as being small and insignificant and not really worth bothering about. But it's magnificent. Sure, I'd be having a lot of fun in the NX or the MR2 or, dare I say it, the Elite. Not the Rome Supra. But the pleasure from a little car and being able to work it hard and enjoy running around up here. Guys, it's brilliant. It's so overlooked and I strongly believe, and I know I keep saying it, but the 106 is one of the greatest things to ever come out of France. And I suppose, by definition, the Saxo too, because they're more or less the same thing, but it is a superb little car. It is a superb, practical, hard, just invincible little car. It just keeps on going. You throw all sorts of terrain at it and it eats it up. You throw long, sweeping roads like, wow, like this, this amazing landscape you throw at it. And it just goes. And it doesn't just go and do it. It does it with such style, with such enjoyment and such finesse that you'd kind of expect out of a bigger car. Maybe I'm just strange, but I'm definitely strange. But right now, with the dappled light ahead of me, the amazing views, this pools appearing here, this bleak, featureless landscape, there's very few places I'd rather be, and very few vehicles I'd rather be in than my little friend, the 106 most surprising things about this whole trip is I've been driving now for seven hours today seven hours from taking Morgan all the way down and now heading back to Sky and I have loved every single moment of it not just because of the roads they are amazing roads but because I love driving this car I absolutely love driving the 106 and it's strange to be able to drive as much pleasure from driving a box standard 1.1 litre small hatchback to driving, say, a Lotus Evora. But, yeah, it's magnificent. It really is. It's just everything like this, these nice sweeping bends. We don't need to back off, we just pull around nicely tuck it in and tighten a little bit here and you're rewarded with another one and we swing round that rewarded with a view over there and then rewarded with another hill to crest and now we've climbed up a wave the rocks change the landscape becomes more undulating more angular with the rocks and again round the next corner to be revealed to be rewarded with this view revealing itself to us. This incredible bleak landscape. And I know wherever we go in the UK that you drive for a few hours and you're in totally, totally different conditions and different area, different everything. But up here it's so apparent. It's almost like becoming in a different country. Like earlier driving through the trees to this, this bleak moorland which is so desolate and beautiful. And that's part of the beauty of it, is the 106 feels like the wrong car to be travelling through this terrain. It doesn't feel like the car that should be about to brave this horrendous looking storm in front of me. It's everywhere is damp, you can see the wind and the rain pulling its way down through the mountains, through the, through the valleys. 
and the 106 is just about immediate head on and the 106 is like yeah all right let's do this it's just it's a wonderful piece of work and i mean we talked about the fact it broke down the fact that, yes okay a hose went that's my own fault as an owner for not giving it enough maintenance for not replacing them because she's on 187 mile, 187 thousand miles about to go to 188,000 miles for a tiny little car. The French didn't envision this when they designed it. They didn't think it was going to go up and do over this. They didn't think it was going to hit 200,000, which it hopefully will. It wasn't part of the design for it. And yet it goes. And when it did die, it was something that a man in a van could come over and bodge back to life. You can't do that with modern cars. They just they won't do it. You can't bodge it back to life. It's this beautiful, perfect blend of something that is modern enough and lots of practicalities. I've got a nice radio. I can plug my phone in. I've got power assist, a steering, a heater that kind of works, you know, it's a half decent heater. But it's still simple. I'm running on a car. These you do very little on this car. I haven't got ABS. It's all. It's still a driving pleasure it's a driving machine it's something that i drive it doesn't drive itself and it's not a box that gets me from a to b it's a machine that you drive and you enjoy driving it and it's like one of the last small cars i think that was built like this now, it comes from an age that i think when persia were actually pretty good the 106 and the 306 good cars good era good cars and then they lost their way and became plastic and obviously I'm not their target market, I don't think I'm any manufacturer's target market. But I do know something that's brilliant when I see it. And the 106 is definitely brilliant. That just looks so exciting ahead. The storm coming down and the 106 is about to charge off into it. It's kind of, it's almost poetic. Now, some cars you head on into this and think oh god look at this that I'm about to drive into what is this weather not the 106 no 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 not the 106 the 106 looks at this and goes bring on the adventure there are very few roads I think that I quite feel the excitement of oh my god the open road than this in the 106 it's not often I'm like, oh yeah, the open road, I can really enjoy the car back home, but this is somewhere really, I'm like, yes, yes, this is where the car belongs. It's amazing, isn't it? A little French car, where does it belong? In the Scottish Highlands. So even now, in this horrendous weather, she holds the road so nicely, and she inspires such amazing confidence. Um, yeah, we're, we're taking things a bit more gently, but she's just superb, absolutely magnificent. Even bits of road like this, which are terrible, the 106 isn't that bothered. It's, it eats it up. When we came the other way, Morgan admitted that even his Beamer wouldn't ride over that as nicely, you'd find it more uncomfortable and the M106 is just unending, yeah, that'll be all right, let's go for it. Just wonderful little car. Wonderful little car, eating up all the terrain, alone in these massive great mountains. And with that, I continued my way onwards to Fort William, winding around the mountains, diving up and down the valleys, and generally just ogling at all of the stunning scenery that Scotland kept throwing at me. It was, without doubt, one of the most magnificent drives I've ever been on. So thank you guys for joining me on this and listening to me wax on about one of my favorite cars of all times. This little car, which above anything else, has become my friend. Now, some of you may have been wondering just where was Matt in all of this undertaking? Well, it turns out that Matt had once again run into problems. 
Yes. Yes, indeed. So, guys, find out what happened to Matt in the next episode of 